Hello and welcome to State of the Economy, a show that connects you with key policymakers and corporate leaders. Today we have with us Mr. Adi Godrej, a very highly respected name in the world of business. Uh, he recently also took over as president of CII. Uh, welcome to our show, uh, Mr. Thank Godrej. You. Good talking to you. You are the president of CII, and uh, today uh, the relationship bet between government and business, for various reasons, is is not uh, as good as it should be, and uh, the economy is, has also slowed down considerably, and there are a lot of issues uh, which which are which are uh, which are encapsulated uh, uh, as policy paralysis that many uh, are talking about. Uh, so as president of CII, uh, what are the big things that you would want the government to address uh, today? No, I wouldn't say that the relationship between the government and business uh, has, uh, has changed or in any way uh, been affected. Clearly, the relationship continues. The fact is that the Indian economy has slowed down, yeah. which is not good for business. It's not good for the economy generally. And uh, we have felt in CII that we should work with government, not just the central government, state governments also, to try and see how we can jointly work towards reviving economic growth. So our theme for uh, this year is reviving economic growth through governance and reform. That's the theme for CII for the year. So the team that took over met the Prime Minister. We mentioned to him two things. One is that we need a strong emphasis on improving governance and reforms. And we also mentioned that the perception is even worse than the reality. reality. So we need to work on seeing that the reality gets improved dramatically. And we also need to work that the perception also is negative. Why is the perception worse than reality? Well, two or three things. One is there's a lot of moaning and groaning. groaning. Whenever things slow down, uh, businessmen uh, uh, get a bit negative. Is that moaning and groaning a bit exaggerated according to you? Yes, it is definitely exaggerated. And very clearly, there's, there's no advantage in moaning and groaning. The advantage is really working to changing things. That really uh, would be where we would like to go. The government also, on the other hand, should ensure that they don't take action where the perception even deteriorates further. For example, to my mind, this retrospective amendments uh, announced in the budget have considerably deteriorated the perception, especially outside the country, outside. but also inside the country. And I think this is a very bad time to have taken such a step. But Mr. Gode, there is some talk uh, yesterday, especially, that the finance ministry is going to dilute uh, some of the provisions which, uh, as you said, uh, uh, provisions which are creating a very uh, bad uh, yes, image also, outside of India. Yeah, we have also taken it up with the finance ministry uh, and will continue to do so. And clearly... Are you uh, hoping that something uh, yes, will I'm, happen? Yes, I am expecting that there would be changes both in the retrospective amendments and in the GAR rules. Uh, I think there, there definitely needs. I think we shouldn't get into a situation where government tries to control everything, including some of the amendments where income tax officers have been given greater powers, etc., which I don't think is good uh, for the future. It's not good for the growth of the economy. Okay. Uh, Mr. Godrej, uh, the other issue is, uh, as you yourself said, uh, the moaning and groaning by businesses uh, seem to be a bit exaggerated. Uh, now, do you think businesses can do things uh, on their own, autonomous of government policy for the moment, which can uh, improve uh, sentiment? Uh, why is, for instance, private investment uh, virtually has ground to a halt? now? Do you think private investment is not happening or the capex, capex uh, cycle uh, has, uh, has, has, has ground to a halt uh, because there is no demand or is it 
how much would you attribute uh, that to, say, lack of policy action? I am a bit confused. No, I don't think uh, private investment has come to a halt uh, by any stretch in of imagination. Of growth. The growth it has, has it has the, the growth in private investment certainly is decelerating, and partly because of the economic situation, uh, but also for other reasons. Uh, for example, if you have taxation policies that are not very reliable, then clearly investment would get affected. But the biggest reason for investment getting affected during the year 11-12 was the very high interest rates. Okay. There was a very series of increase in interest rates by the Reserve Bank of India to try and fight inflation. The inflation, however, in my view, has been mainly caused by global commodity prices. And what we need to do to contain inflation is and not to supply constraints within the tackle economy? the supply side. Supply side. Because if we don't tackle the supply side, merely trying to bring demand down by increasing interest rates won't work. So it should be a combination. But the good thing is, early in this financial year, the Reserve Bank has already reduced the repo rate by 50 basis points. So is that making any difference? Well, it will, certainly. 50 basis points will make a difference. But I, I am looking forward to further uh, reduction in repo rates of at least another 100 basis points during this calendar year. OK. So, uh, <clears throat> so do you, uh, uh, how much do you, do you reckon uh, is all these uh, economic gloom domestic uh, in the domestic economy caused by uh, global factors and how much do you think uh, is attributable to domestic factors? I think certainly some of it is because of global factors. Clearly global GDP growth has slowed down. Uh, the European uh, situation, the Eurozone situation has definitely affected uh, the global situation. But a fair amount of it is caused because of our lack of reforms also. Uh, and uh, uh, the governance issues being raised, decision making has slowed down. So we are trying to tell the government that let's get back on the reform path. Uh, some of the reforms depend on parliamentary approval, which might be politically difficult in certain cases. Others can be done by executive action. Both should be paid a lot of attention to. And CII has already been talking to the opposition also. We've been talking to the states also. The so what biggest, is the response from states? Uh, uh, this uh, response from states is very good. Many of the states are doing very well. There are some states which are growing uh, at more than 10% yeah. in their GDP. GDP yeah. And the biggest single reform that can get India back on track in terms of growth is passage of the goods and services tax. Yeah, yeah. That one reform can add one and a half to two percentage points to India's GDP growth, other things being equal. Yeah. It also addresses a lot of our macroeconomic problems. Absolutely. It will solve the fiscal deficit problem because evasion of taxes will get very difficult. It will, uh, it will address the inflation problem because prices of consumer goods will come down once GST is implemented. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, cost, there'll be cost savings because the logistics will improve. So we think that is the one single reform that can add a lot of value. Yeah. We have worked with the states who are opposing it. We have worked with the opposition. And we do hope uh, for an early passage. Uh, we will uh, discuss that in detail. But after a break, uh, uh, please don't go away and uh, keep watching uh, Raj Sabha television. Welcome back to State of the Economy. We are having a conversation with the chairman of Godrej Group of Industries, Mr. Adi Godrej. Uh, Mr. Godrej, we, uh, we were discussing uh, relationship between uh, business and government. And you were rightly uh, <coughs> saying that, that it's time uh, industry, and you're doing it on behalf of CI, uh, interacted with the central government, state governments, opposition, <coughs> and tried to sort of rebuild uh, and bring back the as it were, government business partnership. Restore growth. Revive Restore growth. growth and also government business partnership on, a, on, a, on an even keel. Uh, now, my question is, uh, do you feel that uh, in the last two years particularly, there has been some uh, breakdown of consensus uh, among businesses? I'm not saying between government and business. Uh, especially in regard to uh, how 
you know, key resources in the economy must be uh, accessed. Uh, 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 there was, uh, everybody has been seeing that there has been a rush uh, during the boom period for uh, resources like coal, spectrum, uh, wh whatever, what have you. And this has also led to, uh, you know, this is rush for resources, uh, rush to build valuations based on resources. Uh, has that also, you think, led to some bad blood? Uh, is, is that one of the reasons why uh, we, we see a situation where there is, uh, there are apprehensions, uh, you know, in the political economy as to how we should move forward on, on policies relating to mining rights, uh, you know, and various other land acquisition bills? No, CI is very clear. Uh, uh, we feel everything in governance should be transparent. Transparent, yeah. We feel uh, everything should be uh, very clear. We should move to improve governance in two different ways. One is we should clearly expose and punish those who violate standards of transparency and governance. Yeah. So maybe we can have a Lokpal at the center. We could have Lokayukts in all the states. Some states already have very effective Lokayukts. So these but are positive not, developments, yeah. That's not enough. That's not enough, yeah. They, we must at the same time see to it that government gets out of a lot of this case by case clearance. clearance. That leads to lack of governance, that leads to corruption, that leads to lack of transparency. And so that, that, that also leads to this nexus between uh, what we describe as crony capitalism, right? Well, it, they, it should be transparent. Yeah. Everything should be by auction. Everything should be by a transparent decision, decision. Uh, so that business can rely on it and government can rely on it. And people have faith in the, in the, in the systems. At the same time, this case-by-case -case clearance should reduce dramatically. And a lot of the interface between the people and the government and businesses and the government should be through the internet. The physical... You mean as far as possible, human contact should be reduced? Should be reduced. Uh, even in the yeah. case of taxation? In many cases, many states have done that. Even in the central governments, there is some progress. It's always good to rely on that. And if you, for example, even subsidies, for example, should be done through this new Aadhaar yeah. uh, card program. Yeah. And we do hope that as early as possible, we, we move in that direction of improving governance. Can you tell us uh, some of the states which are doing well in this regard, uh, which give hope uh, that uh, indeed governance will improve and uh, therefore investments uh, and the business environment will also pick up? There are some states that are growing at more than 10% per annum. Yeah. There are some states in which agriculture is growing at 10% per annum. Yeah. If we can just benchmark mm -hmm. the best practices in India, and CII has a major program to do that. Okay. We have, for example, done a benchmarking exercise in the South, where we have told the southern states what each state can do better by benchmarking what some neighboring state has done. Can you give us some examples, some, some well, positive examples? Uh, unfortunately, I, I was not involved in that southern exercise, yeah, but yeah. our uh, president But you know the results, no? Chris uh, has been involved. There are many areas. Yeah. For example, let's take agriculture. There are many things we can do in agriculture and that directly impinges on inflation. Because if we can improve the supply side, yeah. uh, especially in perishable items. See, what has happened is from mainly consuming food grains, mm -hmm. Indian consumers with their relative affluence now mm -hmm. are consuming much more perishables like fruits, vegetables, proteins, and uh, we should increase the supply side. Right. And it's not difficult to do. You know, if India merely gets to a productivity in each agricultural item, to the best in India, I'm not talking of the best standards in the world, we can double our agricultural output. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, it's interesting uh, that you, you say that your CI is working with the states now. Because if you successfully manage to do partnership with the states, 
then the sum of states well become would become the nation so uh, i think there, oh, absolutely. There, there there would be a absolutely uh, a discernible change in the way uh, things happen in the lot of the gdp growth uh, is managed by the states lot of the gdp growth depends on how effective uh, each state is yeah. so cii has offices in all the states of the country we have about 64 offices across the country we are in a very good position to coordinate this uh, so that we can get growth restored it's a it's a good idea mr godrej but my experience is uh, that that cii often uh, uh, sort of largely confines itself to doing activity uh, in delhi or bombay uh, by that i mean at the center uh, no i think you are you are very wrong in that yeah. you know last year we had 3000 programs across the country okay. and and, uh, and uh, only a fraction of them were in delhi and bombay we have okay. programs in all the states we have programs in other parts yeah. we, that is the point i'm making yeah. so are you adequately decentralizing your oh, absolutely. efforts absolutely absolutely and we have been doing that there are two uh, kinds of stresses that uh, uh, people are talking about uh, today one is uh, the fiscal deficit and the other is current account deficit which is about 4% of gdp now do you see these two problems uh, getting solved uh, in the near term i feel as soon as we bring the gst in a lot of our macroeconomic problems get sorted out yeah. and we will be on a 9% plus growth path and i understand we have been working with the states uh, we met the empowered committee under sushil modi also in delhi our people met them uh, the finance minister has also mentioned appreciate the cii work in this and as you have seen uh, there is uh, 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 a good uh, yeah. movement on that front okay. and probably in this financial year we can get the gst get we will discuss gst in greater mm. detail uh, but after this uh, break uh, please don't go away and keep watching raj sabha television Welcome back to State of the Economy. We are having a conversation with the Chairman of Godrej Group, Group of Industries, uh, uh, Mr. Adi Godrej, uh, uh, who also recently took over as President of CII. There are a lot of problems uh, with the implementation of GST. I'll just uh, name one or two, and then I would want you to sort of uh, uh, tell us uh, at what stage are you uh, in, in your discussions with uh, the state governments, or Mr. Sushil Modi, who is the head of the Empowered Committee on GST. one uh, mr godrej the taxation rate which <coughs> the finance ministry or the government is envisaging as a starting point it seems to be not 24% now uh, a lot of people are not happy with this uh, mr kelkar who is one of the uh, founding uh, uh, who 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 participated in the gst uh, reforms uh, committee uh, uh, also believes that uh, the starting rate should be no more than 16% uh, then it makes sense to have gst and, and at 16 you could cover a much larger base of the economy now where do you think uh, is uh, is the, is the policy headed now do you think starting with 24% will help well uh, we are very clear it's if gst is implemented government revenues both central and state will rise because evasion of taxes will become almost impossible yeah it it will cover a lot of economic activity which currently not now been covered now the lower the rates the better because that will also mean consumers will get benefit that would mean consumption would increase if consumption increase production would increase taxation would increase the most important thing is not to argue about the rates in fact we have suggested they be kept a little flexible to start with the states also want some flexibility nothing wrong with that once it is in implemented then you will know how much revenue you are collecting okay. and in many cases reducing the rates of taxes will enable you to collect even more revenue okay. which has happened again and again so the important thing is to get it done now if you remember we talk about a high rate of growth mm -hmm. between 2003 and 2007 yeah. one of the major reasons was the implementation of state vat at that time true and some states stayed away very good. They... some states stayed away and quickly wanted to join 
So everybody has benefited from these indirect taxes. So there was a positive demonstration effect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tremendously. Mm. No, but uh, yeah, but do you think 24% is a uh, is a good starting point, or do you think 16% or no, 14 would be a good starting point? I think perhaps the uh, perhaps the a good starting point may be somewhere halfway. Somewhere halfway. 10 plus right? 10. So have you discussed this with the, the no, GST committee? Not, because first we want to get the principle established principle. that the that the uh, that the constitutional amendment should pass, mm -hmm. the principle should have been. That's a matter of detail. Details can be worked out even later, or can be corrected later. Okay. And and uh, what is you how, how how do you view uh, this whole debate on uh, the fiscal deficit? Now I I have, my view is. Uh, that the government debt to GDP ratio actually has fallen uh, from 85 to 70 percent over the last uh, uh, many years. Now, should we look at debt to GDP as a metric, or should we look at fiscal deficit in a very sort of fundamentalist way? Because I want your view on this. I tell you why. Because post 2008 uh, global crisis, the same industry representatives went to the government and said that. that please deliver more stimulus uh, to keep up aggregate demand and that's what happened and uh, at that time i remember industry representatives even welcomed the narega program saying that it it kept up rural consumption now why why has the industry changed its position now uh, it, this is something that puzzles me no industry has not changed its position industry very clearly feels there must be stimulus now the stimulus can be in various forms the best form of fiscal stimulus currently would be passage of the GST. Yeah, that, I, I agree with you. So but consider the GST may is, take about a year or two. Yeah, what do no, you do in the medium what, term? What uh, medium term, for example, bringing the repo rate down, okay. in, uh, bringing the CRR down. So more, in more, term, more interest rate cuts. Right now, we are in a position where the most important economic objective is to restore growth, revive growth. Right. Other things should take a little bit of a back seat for a while. Once we concentrate on that, then we can tackle the uh, other issues also. And what about, uh, you didn't answer my other question. Would you look at debt to GDP ratio if it is, as long as it is coming down, is that a, a better metric uh, than to get fixated on a fiscal deficit figure? Well, both are important, but I think debt to GDP is very important. If debt to GDP becomes very high, it can be very harmful in the long and, run. And if it goes down progressively. That is good. That means you are making progress. Progress. Uh, then if, if that is happening, then uh, you need not get fixated on a fiscal yes. deficit figure. But right? the clear thing is that if you do not concentrate on GDP growth, mm -hmm. then the debt to GDP ratio improvement that we've seen when that GDP will, growth was good will start deteriorating again. Mr. Godrej, you know, the, do you think the mindset, uh, I, Indian businesses, Indian economists, policymakers, and the people also had actually come to believe that 8 to 9 percent growth was for India was par for the course. Uh, now, considering that the GDP has now fallen to uh, about 6.5, 6.6, uh, below 7%, uh, do you think there is a certain mindset change that maybe uh, that this is what our potential growth rate is? Uh, there seems to be uh, a certain you know uh, pessimism about growth. Do, do you do you detect that? Uh, I detect it, but I don't subscribe to it. I, I think India's potential clearly is 9% plus growth. Okay. And we need to have the reforms that can keep us on that track. It's eminently possible. Uh, it's, a, it's a question of uh, clearly making up one's mind that we need to go in that direction. The GDP growth is important. All our other objectives of uh, uh, inclusiveness, of... Uh, uh, equality will be very difficult if growth slows down. Slows down, yeah. Do you subscribe to uh, this view, uh, f which has come from many economists, that, that the sweet spot uh, of high growth between 2003 and 8 was also because uh, the West was doing very well, and now with the US and Europe uh, uh, continuing to, uh, to remain depressed, Europe, ex Germany, is actually in recession. Uh, do you think our growth will come back to 9% or can come back to 9% if, if those countries don't do well? I don't think it was as much. Of course, the global economy did do well in those years. But I don't think our strong growth was as much 
because of the global economy as our reform program. Okay. And one of them was the state VAT, which I mentioned earlier. So I, I am clear, no matter what happens globally, and global, remember, global growth rate has not uh, slowed down very much. It is down, but it's, it's still handsome. And if, if we can get our reform program and governance program going forward, I think we can do extremely well. No, because the average of uh, the US, Europe and Japan is actually probably much less than 2%. Uh, yes, but many developing countries are growing faster than they grew at that time. For example, Africa is going so faster. So it has, you say it has been domestically South America is now. growing faster. Yeah, yeah. Overall, uh, global growth will still be close to 4%. Uh, thanks uh, for being with us, uh, Mr. Godrej. Appreciate uh, Good talking your to you. giving us time. Uh, so that is all we have uh, in this uh, episode of uh, State of the Economy. We'll be back again uh, with another episode soon. Thank you.